Welcome to a special episode about Zalachapod intelligence. But before we get to know how Zalachapods think, let's first take a look at the average shark's brain. While small in size compared to a mammalian brain, this organ is incredibly complex for its mass. A prominent forebrain not only contains powerful olfactory receptors, but also allows the animal to engage in quite nuanced learning and social behaviors. While exact intelligence varies between species, sharks are generally considered some of the most intelligent fish on Earth. Early salachopods were similar to their epaulet ancestors in overall brain anatomy and intelligence, albeit with more developed cerebellums to accommodate for the transition from fins to legs. While able to engage in complex social interactions, they remained mostly solitary and acted primarily on the more primal instincts of finding food, evading predators, and reproducing. This model is shared by anonicopods, which are similar to these same basal stock. The more derived clades of salachopod, particularly all use salachopods, have evolved a more complex brain structure that affords them a greater degree of intelligence than their ancestors. The forebrain is become enlarged and formed a structure converging to the frontal lobe, which controls advanced problem solving and memory. This portion is larger in squalosaurs and carotheres, many of which rival some reptiles and even placental mammals in intellect. While they still bear high intelligence by salachopod standards, Chelocarcharids are generally lower on the spectrum than neonicopods due to their more basal brain anatomy and significantly smaller frontal lobes. This led most of them to have a cognitive ability that could be best compared to many marsupials. However, there are some outliers in this respect, possessing intelligence on par with gross simian primates at most. The descendants of the pig like Porcopelta saw moderate success in the ferocity scene due to their armor, but they were unremarkable in terms of brain power. Pelta Taurus Maliorus, while blessed with a high metabolism and spine plating used for fighting off small predators, is more solitary and slow way than other herbivores of a similar size. This also may equate skittish with something so well defended, as it tended to flee from larger threats instead of standing its ground. Despite its ancestors' diminutive size, Pelta Taurus Maliorus was quite large for a mainland pig of at one and a half meters, or five feet from snout to tail. Its hatchlings are about 5 inches long and surprisingly fleet foot at the expense of the adult's protective spikes and tusks. While some porcopeltas became more active, others doubled down on their defenses. Porcochelis cygnus was another herbivore of the group that bears a striking resemblance to a turtle. This low browser developed its armor into a complete shell to protect both its top and bottom halves from attacks, although it couldn't retract its limbs into its body like most turtles do. The effectiveness of its armor made high intelligence superfluous, causing Porcochelis to regress to a simpler state of mind over time. Porcochelis segnus could reach sizes up to 70 centimeters or 28 inches in body length. Its wedged long young were more vulnerable to predators due to their smaller size and undeveloped armor, and so they were laid in large clutches to maximize the amount that survived to adulthood. Another monster seen Pelocarcharid. Carcara scion managed to find success of its own and diversify into the superfamily Carcara scionoidea. Cyanosuchus natatorius was a semi aquatic piscivore that evolved a powerful paddle tail for swimming. Cyanosuchus individuals have been served chasing prey to the surface to exploit their sensitivity to light, a sign of their high intelligence. Conflicts with Sucharynchus were rare due to the small monstrous taste for top dwelling game. Cyanosuchus natatorius had greater lengths of up to 5 meters, or 16 feet, making it slightly larger than a black caiman. Its hatchlings emerged from their eggs at only 7 inches long, hunting small prey like hermit craze before gradually switching to larger game. Other Carcara cyanoids continued to specialize in arboreal niches. Terracyon nectophilus was a nocturnal jungle dweller that evolved the patagium, enabling it to glide through the canopy demonstrating convergent evolution in the Scolopterans like Protolatus. Although useful for calculating its trajectory during each bound, its intellect, coupled with its active lifestyle, will force it to eat large amounts of food each night. Its well-developed ears grant an acute hearing, even among sharks. Terracyon nectophilus is about 45 centimeters, or about 18 inches in body length, about the size of a laughing kookaburra. It nested primarily in the trees, 
producing offspring that hatch around 2 inches long and scour the canopy for arthropod prey. Although high intelligence is standard among squalosaurs, the level of complex thought displayed by the species Gemini hydroides is very unusual. Each head contains a brain with a frontal lobe that is enlarged in excess of what its basal status suggests, appearing more akin to derived clays like swallow monstrans. The most likely reason for this development is to increase social cohesion and minimize conflict between the two Gemini heads. Each head of a Gemini individual has its own personality due to the dual nature of its psychology, and while these personalities vary, a, co a consistent trait is a deep sibling bond. The more dominant sibling asserts motor control while hunting, and typically eats first. The subordinate one keeps watch for predators and alerts its sibling when spots danger. However, these roles are often interchanged as the pair squabble for dominance, trying to cow each other into the mission with shrill hisses. On the next episode, we'll take a first look at the Santa scene, a time where the animals of Swallowsia reach an all-time high in diversity and abundance as the ecosystem reaches its prime.